everyone so good evening good evening good evening it is thursday february the 10th and i want to welcome you guys to a little tea time i am your host jerick aka jari's d your favorite published author and before i start to show you guys i definitely would love for you guys to share Share, share the the videos. Share the videos for your friends, your family, your loved ones. Please like and please comment on the show here with me a little tea time. If you guys are definitely loving the show, I definitely would love for you guys to share it so others can watch it and others can partake. And um, I definitely got to send a shout out to Mr. Q Parker from the R&B group from the 90s, 112, for... Tuning into a little tea time on my Instagram at the Jarius Dion last night, and for him leaving a comment about the show. So if y'all been seeing my post today, I did a lot of um, I did a post today where I was just shouting him out as much as I could because I really appreciated the love and the energy and the support for what I'm doing here with the little tea time. Um, Got to send a shout out to Bigelow, Perfect Peach. Shout out to Bigelow, Perfect Peach for the tea. And also got to send a shout out to Gino Stima Tea for the teas that are brewed up in my cup for each and every single show. Here with a little tea time. Um, So we're getting closer to the weekend, you guys. Are y'all excited? Who's excited about the Super Bowl and the halftime show? If y'all are Super Bowl excited like me, I need y'all to go crazy for like 30 seconds if y'all are super bold excited like me um getting into tonight's show happy black history month again to everyone all around the world um definitely would love to just continue to send that energy out into the world continuing to motivate and love and support one another as an african-american community as a race of people and that's not to just our people but to all people happy african-american history month you guys let's not forget where we come from and the shoulders that we stand on um song of the month song of the month is still in continuation with stop the violence movement and the song is self-destruction you're headed for self-destruction um definitely would love for you guys to get to youtube and check out the song Get into it from Stop the Movement and the song is Self-Destruction. You guys, I think y'all would love the song. If y'all are from the generation that I'm from, you would um, really appreciate the music, appreciate the message. So definitely want to love y'all to get over to Stop the Violence Movement and check out Self-Destruction. Still keeping in mind that February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Um, We want to be able to share and and encourage and talk to our children about dating and the violence that comes with it and teaching them about the tools and and having them equipped with the knowledge for situations that come along with teen teen violence with it comes down into a dating lifestyle. The children are getting older and they're going to want to date. So we want to encourage them to be mindful of the situations that can happen in dating from teen violence to um to date rape to um just situations that we need our children to be abreast of so y'all definitely want to continue to keep that in mind as we go through the month of february and all year long 365 days a year um word of the day is fictal 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 
Fictal is spelled F-I-C-T-I-L-E. Fictal. It's part of speech is an adjective. Its origin is Latin, early 17th century, and its meaning is made of earth or clay by potter, relating to pottery or its manufacture. And the second one is capable of being molded or plastic. Now, I'm going to get this to y'all in hood terms. In hood terms, this is literally what we mean, getting it out the mud. Literally building and creating something from nothing. So getting it out the mud. I um, definitely would love for you guys to check out that word. Incorporate it into your vocabulary. The word of the day is fictal. Um, again, still celebrating the Critical Mass Exhibition opening down at our space here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I've actually been down to the exhibit twice in the last week. So I definitely have been enjoying it. Have to send a shout out again to Miss Deborah Robertson and Mr. Um, Gennaro Kai Lai Smith, both winning two thousand dollars for their prizes and of for their work in the Shreks Critical Mass Exhibition. I'm very excited about this exhibition, you guys, because I will be doing um, an episode of a little tea time in art space next week. So I'm definitely looking forward to just. Letting you guys check out that space. I know I've been posting pictures, but I will be doing a live show. So y'all will get to see some of the artwork down at the art space for Critical Mass that is still going on until March the 18th. So we definitely would love to encourage you guys to get down to art space in downtown Shreveport on Texas Street. Check out Critical Mass. Also, stay tuned to the Ratchet City Blues documentary with Cherie Gray and Lumpy Grits and the crew that's going to be working this film. I'm so excited about it. And we are continuing to grow and grow and grow and grow. And I am definitely looking forward to filming. So, Cherie, darling, I'm looking forward to this work. You keep putting in the work, Queen Sister, and we're going to keep riding with you. Um, the business warming event is coming up February the 27th. If you have not registered yet, you guys definitely want to get with Miss Dorian Ford and register for the event. Um, definitely going to be an event for business owners, for artists, for people who are just on the grind and on their rise to creating their brands and their businesses. This is an event that you definitely would love to be a part of. If you're down in Houston, Texas, let's have a lot of viewers in Houston, Texas. Hey, Houston, if y'all are able to come through, we would love to have y'all at the Business Warming Event, February the 27th. If y'all need more information about that, please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, inbox me. We'll see if we can hook you up and get y'all linked up with Ms. Dorian Ford and you can register for the Business Warming Event, February the 27th. Um, again, did y'all see my impromptu concert down at Rhino Coffee? If y'all have not seen it yet, I'm going to need y'all to get over to my Facebook page, Jarek, the King of Money Man Thomas, and check out my impromptu concert at Rhino Coffee. Um, stay tuned to another episode of A Little Tea Time. Tomorrow's guest would be published author. Miss Alessa Kirkhart. Hey, Alessa, if you're watching tonight, I'm so excited about you doing the show tomorrow and going to be getting in contact with you, just keeping you abreast on how things are going. So definitely, you guys want to love to tune in tomorrow, catch the show. It's also going to be at 7 o'clock, but if I'm not correct, I'll have the flyer up there so y'all be able to catch it. Um, Downtown Shreveport Art Walk. It's March the 4th. 2022 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, again, I'm still keeping my, my eyes open and my ears to the street about this event. I'm very excited about this particular event, and I would love to be a part of it. So if anyone has more information on the Downtown Shreveport Art Walk happening March the 4th, you guys, please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, keep me informed. Um, my ears are to the street. My eyes are open. So you guys just let me know what's going on out there in the streets with the downtown Shreveport Art Walk. Um, Got to send a shout out to DJ Trey and the top of the boot cues hosting the Blackout Masquerade Scholarship Fundraiser March the 5th in Arcadia, Louisiana. 
Um, I've already been sharing that flyer on my Facebook, but if y'all have any more flyers coming up out there, DJ Trey and the top of the boot cues, please, please, please share that flyer with me and I will continue to promote your event on my Facebook page and on my Instagram also. Um, Batman fans, are y'all ready for this film? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? I'm very excited about this film. March the 4th will be the premiere of the new Batman film starring Robert Patterson and Zoe Kravitz. You guys, plan your date now. Get your tickets. Get ready to go and see this movie. And hey, anybody out there in the universe, y'all can send a brother some tickets. I'd love to go and check it out. So hey, holla at your boy. Um, Has anyone still seen the single black female with... Miss Amber Riley from Glee, Miss Raven Goodwin, and Kay Michelle from Love and Hip Hop. Um, I have not heard any more views about it, but I am very excited about it. Um, the movie came out on Lifetime. So, hey, Lifetime, if y'all have a, a, a DVD coming out soon, please do not hesitate to inbox your brother and let me know how I can get in on that. And um, send me a copy so I can get into Single Black Female. Um, the movie was a um, was a spin off of single white female. If y'all are familiar with single white female, also a really great film from back in the eighties, and um, y'all are gonna definitely love it if y'all seen it. Hey, kudos to you. Um, Tyler Perry is bringing back Mabel Madea Simmons in his new film Madea's Homecoming, premiering on Netflix February the twenty fifth. Now Tyler. Tyler, you're one of my favorite people in the world. And I know that the DVD is going to come out once you release your film. So I would definitely love a copy of the DVD, Tyler, for my collection. I have a, a, a serious collection of your work. And I would love to add that to my collection. So, Mr. Perry, sir, if you are watching tonight, I would definitely love to get a copy of My Dear's Homecoming premiering on Netflix February the 20th. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about this because I'm going to be talking about this probably until next week. Um, are y'all excited about this new Color Purple film? This new Color Purple film is set to have a phenomenal cast from Miss Danielle Brooks playing Miss Sophia to Fantasia Taylor playing Miss Seeley, um, Coleman Domingo playing Mr. Following the Danny Glover. Taraji P. Henson, a.k.a. Miss Cookie, playing Suge Avery. Um, Haley Bailey, playing Nettie. Corey Hawkins, playing Harpo. And her, capital H, dot, capital E, dot, capital R, dot, is set to play Speak, a.k.a. Mary Agnes, in the film, um, I'm very excited about this film premiering in 2023. So definitely we're going to be keeping my eyes open and my ears to the street about the premiere date for the new Color Purple musical film. Um, again, going to send a shout out to Mr. Quincy Edwards for sending me his films. And I got a chance to critique them this week, King Brother. I love your work. Got to shout you out again. And again, I dub you. Quincy Edwards Perry for your phenomenal films that I've gotten to, to watch on YouTube. Um, keep putting down the word, bro. Love it. Um, Got to send a shout out to Essence Magazine with Method Man on the cover. Uh, Method Man, you look real good, brother. You look real spiffy. So I'm very proud of what they've done over at Essence Magazine with Method Man on the cover. Um, y'all, if y'all have not seen those pictures yet, those pictures are on my Facebook and on my Instagram. So y'all can check those out on my Facebook at Jerrica King Among Men Thomas and on my Instagram at the Jarius Dion. And I want to say Strong Gifted Ruler on, also on, on both of my Instagrams. So y'all definitely want to check those out if y'all have not checked those out yet. Um, on to this Janet Jackson documentary. Still have not gotten around to watching the Janet Jackson documentary. But I got to send her out another shout out. Hey, Janet. Hey, Janet, if you're watching out there in the universe, Janet, I would love to get a copy of your documentary for my collection. 
Um, I am a fan of yours. I have been growing up watching all of what you've done with your music career to the movies. Poetic Justice is definitely one of my favorite films. It is one of my all-time favorite films. And I am definitely excited about what you're doing with your documentary. So, hey, Janet Jackson, Miss Jackson, I would love for your people to contact my people. And we can see if I can get a copy of that documentary. Um, definitely would love for you guys to get over to Saucy Sonya Spices dot com and shop and use my coupon code good eats jerry and receive five percent off of your purchases when you shop at saucy sonya spices dot com um, the flyer is already up on my page and i will continue to promote every monday on my facebook so every monday you will see that flyer for saucy sonya spices dot com if you have not yet contacted me yet about saucy sonya spices for yourself right now and you would love to get more information definitely hit me up in my inbox here on facebook or on my instagram and i can share the flyer with you guys so i definitely would love for you guys to check out saucy sonja spices and i know if y'all follow me on facebook and y'all follow me on instagram and y'all follow saucy sonja spices y'all have seen her delicious footage of the delicious foods that she has been cooking up and serving up for us on the gram and on facebook definitely been having a lot of food porn with her so gotta shout you out saucy sonya spices.com y'all check it out um got to get into my facebook follower birthdays happy birthday to miss Britt nina happy birthday Britt baby girl i love you so much i send you my love and my energy um, happy birthday to you, Miss Amber Marie, Queen Sister. Um, I send you also my love and my energy as well. So y'all enjoy your birthdays today. And I got my celeb birthday. So y'all are in very good company with some um, actresses, Emma, Emma Roberts, Chloe Grace Moretz, Yara Shahidi, Elizabeth Banks, and Uzo. Abdoba, Ab, Adoba, Uzo Abdoba, and Uzo Adoba. She was in um, Orange Is the New Black. If y'all have not seen that, um, I watched Orange Is the New Black, and she's also doing the commercials where um, they're trying to get and gain information about cancer research. So happy birthday to all of you ladies today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed y'all birthdays today, and Brittany. You gonna see me fall in the spot for you, baby girl. I got you. Um, got to also send a shout out to Millennium Studios here in my hometown, opening back up downtown. Um, I love to get in that studio and film an episode of a little tea time, my show. Um, so I would definitely love someone from Millennium Studios to get in contact with me, and we can see how we can set up me doing a set for a little tea time in the studio. Now that I have shared my delicious tea with you guys, are y'all ready for my guest? Well, my guest is a director and filmmaker, and she has grown on me as a human being just watching what she's been doing on her Facebook. Um, definitely want to shout her out tonight and show her some love. Hey, Christy, Christy Woodard, are you ready? We're about to bring you in for your episode on a little tea time. So I'm about to tag you in. I know, right? I love me some Chloe Grace Mar Moritz, too. And shout out to Houston, Texas in the building. Y'all been showing me some hell of a love with all of my guests that's been coming through from Houston. Can't, um, I, I just, I got to get down in Houston just at some point. Y'all just been showing me a ton of love. So shout out to Houston, Texas. Shout out to my viewers checking in tonight. Miss Yakeisha Scott, Miss Nene O'Neill, Miss uh, It's Kia Renee. Thank you for tuning in. Thank y'all so much for your love and support tonight. 
with a little tea time. And while we are waiting for my guest, Miss Christy, to come in, um, today has been a really great day, y'all. I've just been on a high. Um, yeah, I got this little mark in my face. I, I, I had to get a pimple that went bust, but I got it. But uh, got a little, got a little war wound, but I still feel pretty good, even with my war wound, because I know war wound gonna get me down. And again, want to send a shout out to my guest for tomorrow, Miss Alessa Kirkhart. I cannot wait to chat with her about her books and about her self-publishing business. So I definitely am looking forward to interviewing her tomorrow. I wonder how everyone's day has been. It's literally, literally one more day closer to the weekend. I'm excited. Um, I'm ready to get some rest. But overall, I have enjoyed the weekend so far, the week so far. And looking forward to the Super Bowl. I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl. Who's looking forward to the Super Bowl? Like I am. I am definitely looking forward to the Super Bowl. So I'm definitely, definitely ready to see the game. I'm hungry already thinking about it. Who's hungry anyway? I'm just hungry, period. Like I had a burger, but I'm I'm back hungry again. Uh, well, well, well. See, we're having a little technical difficulty to get Christy in, but we're going to keep, I sent the request. I just sent it, Um, I just add, hit the, the button for you. So I'm waiting on it to let you in, darling. Definitely working to get you in. Wow. <laughs> What's wrong? Looks like we're having a little trouble getting my guest in tonight. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, goody. Hey, Christy, are you okay? I know that we're trying to get you in, but... I just want to make sure that you're fine. Um, I know that the technical difficulties can be a pain in the ass, but I just want to make sure that you're okay while we're working to get you in. Mm, mm, mm. I know, like, it's the emoji face for me. It's literally the emoji face for me. Connection failed. And we're going to try this again because we're going to work to get Miss Christy Woodard in here, director and filmmaker. Christy Woodard, we're going to get you in, darling. Not giving up. We're not giving up. Here we go. Yes. Good evening. Hey, How you doing, darling? I'm reading your message right now in Messenger. <laughs> I was like, if it not work, we, we'll figure something else out. Yeah, because cause I'm going to make a show. 
Mm-hmm. I don't give up. We we would have been on the on the telephone having your interview, but we would have got your interview. Correct. How are you, darling? I'm doing okay. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. It's been a great day. I've been riding on this hot all day. And now you're adding to it. So thank you so much for being here tonight. You're welcome. I'm excited. Yes. So I know that me and you met on the set of Hashtag Situationships. Uh, Yep. And that was my first live shoot. That was the first project I did. Then Electra was the second project that I did. So I got to thank you right now for just gracing me with hashtag situationships and just for making me a part of what started out as a book that turned into a, a, a bigger dream. Indeed. You're welcome. Thank you for being a part of it, y'all. Like, that was the most fun day of shooting with all the people there at uh, East Bank Theater. We got to hear yes. you sing. It was, it was a party. But <laughs> <laughs> before we start your interview, I just, I wanted to, to talk about that. Like, I was trying to be so low-key that day. There was no way. Your presence would not allow you to be low-key, honey. I'm just telling you. It, it will I, not. It was for me. I was like, no. Um, I was sitting on the second row, while everything was going on. And shout out to R. A. Radcliffe. R. A. Radcliffe. She, she, that girl turned me into a bigger than life person in that room that day. <laughs> she said, "Y'all don't know who that is. That's Jarvis <laughs> Dion." And I was like, no. No, 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 I'm just Jerry. I'm just an extra on the <laughs> set. Mm-mm. I'm not. She called you out. And I was mortified by it. I was horrified. But in it, it made me embrace the artist. It made me embrace who I am and what I am now doing now. And I got to shout out R.A. Radcliffe because if it wasn't for her, Jarius Dion would have sat back on that row and I would have did my little yays and nays Mm -hmm. and claps and I would have went on and it would have been all good. But she was the person that pulled me into the light that day on that set. So I got to shout her out again. Shout out. So Candice. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's get into your interview. I know that you're pressed for time. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get to the first question. Tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, Christy. Oh, I hate talking about myself. Well, let's try it. But, <laughs> um, I'm from Shreveport, originally born and raised, um, uh, LSU graduate, and I have my MFA now. And, um, I w- used to work in news and then started working in radio and now I'm in film. So it's been a long media journey for me, but, um, yeah, I'm currently the, the situationships that he's talking about, we met on was, uh, my most recent project was a web series adapted from my friend AJ's book. And, um, yeah. he came to be an extra on our, I think that, no, that was, it was one. It was one of our first. It was like our first weekend post pandemic. So th- it was like a whole deal. So yeah, it was. It was just weird have being in that space, you know, it during was. COVID and all that. But yeah, we had fun. So yes, it was. That was my my dad's birthday weekend. The day that we were shooting, that was my dad's birthday weekend. So I went and took my dad balloons and I set them out at his grave and. Uh, mm-hmm. I came to the, I went and did the event with Cherie Gray, and then after the event with Cherie Gray, I came over to the set, and it was absolutely, like, a dream for me. I was like, I'm in a moment. This is a mood. 
And, and I was so nervous, but once I got in the room and we just saw how everything was going, it was just really cool. It was smooth. I got to meet all of these other artists and actors. Shout out to um, to Brittany. I want to mess her last name up. Um, was it Pope? Brittany Pope was there. Brittany Pope. Britt Pope. Mm -hmm. um, got a, um, again, R.A. Radcliffe. Um, oh, it was a couple of people there. Um, shout out to um, who? Because every I'm trying to get all of these names, and then in my mind just went I think blank. was there. Did you know Tiana yeah. before? Okay. I, no, I didn't. I didn't know who Tiana was. Okay, Tiana Andrews. Um, I'm trying. Like I'm trying to picture y'all in your seats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay uh, Jay Anderson, who played the male yeah. man. Um. Lamica, who played well, I ain't gonna tell. She was in the the finale. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in case some people haven't seen it yet, uh, I'm trying to think. It was like it was a bunch. I was surprised we had so many people there, and we had to stagger people because of COVID regulations. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we had. For, oh, uh, what was his name? The one who was causing trouble, Joshua. Joshua. Joshua James. <laughs> Had everybody cackling. I can't even get no quiet. Please, quiet on the set. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, gotta send a shout out to the behind the scenes crew who worked on this film too. Jason uh, Woods Jason was Wood. there. J Jose was my DP camera person. Um, AJ was the star, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think of who else we had there. Victor. I was. I don't know. If Victor was there that day. But, Probably um, was. Yeah. I don't know if Victor was there that. Cause yeah, it was like it, it was tough. Like we had to reschedule that shoot so many times. It you mm -hmm. know, and then COVID happened. So um, a lot of yeah. the people we were supposed to have there, we couldn't. Yeah, I remember when y'all sent out the casting call for this. This was pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. and. I was like, this is going to be my first, like, I was excited about it because I was like, I'm just going to be an extra. I've never did anything acting wise. I'll go in, I'll be an extra, I'll take direction. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened. And I was like, no, <laughs> I had my heart set on it. <laughs> uh, we were gonna shoot it was just a matter of getting those dates together and you know yeah. like rescheduling everybody it was just so hectic once the pandemic it was hit. it was and then when i saw the actual film date because the film date was on my dad's birthday so i was oh. like okay god you're lining it up for me thank you oh. and so even on the set that day when when aj was going through his lines when he was when we were actually filming you could feel how his energy shifted the room and how the, those those words pierced everyone. Mm -hmm. And I literally was like, when we had call, when you called cut, I was like, y'all didn't feel that? <laughs> it's like, y'all didn't feel how that just shifted the whole room? Right. It, like, everybody was just like, oh my, by the end of the day, y'all knew all of his lines and... <laughs> Yeah, he, he had some he had some good lines up in there, some good one liners, you know. He so, did. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. it was a pleasure for me because me being a writer, meeting another writer whose work was being adapted into a film, it was like watching something that I'm thinking about doing and wanting to do to see my my work come to life like that. And I'm mm -hmm. still wanting my work to come to life because I'm I'm writing coming full circle three, and I want coming full circle three uh, to be a film. Okay. So it's in my it's in my plan. It's in my dream. Right. Yeah. Gotta, any, um and AJ AJ's been a poet, like a spoken word artist for a long time. That's how I met him, sort of. Yeah. Like he, he's also a, a a hip hop artist, so he writes a lot in a lot of different forms. And yeah. um this book came from was an idea that came from a um a set he did here in Shreveport, he did like a featured spoken word set and stuff like that. And then he got the idea for the book. And then I read the book and was like, yeah, this needs to be a series because it's like, it was powerful to me. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I think for him being on, like being the writer and then having mm -hmm. it adapted and also playing himself with a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
he, he really took it on and I'm very proud of him and, and yeah, how well he did. He did a fantastic job. He really did a fantastic job because you can tell that he was already in his element. Mm -hmm. And because he already knew the words, he was living what he was already saying. Mm -hmm. And it made us as as just people who were just there on the set, it made us enjoy it more because we could see that he was more dedicated to it than we were. Mm -hmm. I was just an extra, but just to be in the room, it just, ah. And... I know we're doing your interview, but I got to just toss this in. You did something extra special with me that I was not prepared for. What and you, come, you, you came, you told me to come down and you did some filming with me and you got some of my little face in that light. Yes. And after <laughs> that, I was like, I don't ever want to see my face without that light again. I don't ever want to. It was like it lit up my eyes and it lit up my face. It did. I was like that. Yeah, I came and got like individual shots and stuff like that. And you, you looked nervous. Like the camera was like I all was. over your grill. <laughs> I was. I was like, what is going on? Like, no, I need to get these single shots. And you, yeah, you were you were prominent in that episode. So y'all go <laughs> check that one out. Whatever. I loved your faces. I was like, oh, he got to be in here. He got to be in here. And it was the same thing. The same thing with with with, with situationships, with hashtag situationships, was the same thing with Electra, um, because I had to act with my face. Mm -hmm. So it 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 did something for me. I was like, okay, I'm becoming the dude with the acting face. Face, hey, yes. <laughs> so for me, that was like okay. For me, that that's when I was like, okay. Second time of me filming using nothing but my face, I'm becoming the face actor. I'm becoming a face actor. Right. I accepted it. I embraced it, and I'm looking forward to whatever else I get to do with this beautiful chocolate face. <laughs> the face. Y'all need a face. Y'all call Jerry. Because he will, he, will, he, will, he will serve all of it right into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He was intense. He took direction well. I'm, I'm, I'm pitching you to all the other directors and casting agents. He, he takes direction well. He was patient. He will entertain hey. you during the break. <laughs> hey, hey, Quincy Edwards, if you're watching, Quincy. I'm just saying. I got about to... Right. He, like, he, and then you, you were you were one of the ones who were very communicative. You know, asking like what you should wear and you know. Making sure that you were your your call time was straight and all this other stuff. So yeah, it's um, yes. it's it was it's, a pleasure having you on set. Thank you thank you so much. It was an experience for me that I really cherished because I did not realize that from there I was going to end up going into Electra with Sh Sheree, and I was like, wow, wow, the door that opened. It was a door that opened for me. So I owe you a great deal of that. Thank you so much because you really opened the door for me to oh. to get this space now that I am. Now here we are a year <laughs> later and right. hashtag relationships won third place in the um which film prize festival was it? We won third place at Lake Charles Film Festival and then we <laughs> were a semi finalist. We won another festival. We we we've, we've gotten like selected into like six festivals and we placed in in three of those festivals so i'm like, yeah. yeah i love that <laughs> and i love it because being a person that was on the set we know the work that went into making that happen we love seeing just the behind the scenes which because it took us a little while to get that footage y'all but in it we we just we we gave all of the energy that we have we gave all of the love that we have and all of the support and the time that we had to it and again i couldn't ask for a better experience for that to be my first acting experience on a set i took it in mm -hmm. i seriously took it in so we're going to get back to your interview the next question is when you're not working wait hold on because i gotta i gotta fan here i got a viewer here watching she said what inspired the film book to be bought to the screens and what is the film about that's miss kia renee 
Oh, hey, Kia. Um, Situationships is a web series, and it's about, um, I don't know what to call about. Well, everybody knows what a situation ships, ship is. Um, mm -hmm. AJ's definition is, um, is, is a little, you know, different, but, um, basically you're, you're in this, you're in a situation where it looks like a relationship. It feels like a relationship, but it's not, you know, like you cross that, you cross that line, but y'all mm -hmm. aren't official. So, um, this book was inspired by AJ's real life and you can get the book on Amazon and, uh, and 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 barnesandnoble.com. Let me throw that in there real quick. Um, because of Jada. no, this was before Jada. This, this came out in 2018. So before before entanglement, there was situationships. So, That's right. Oh God. So, and you know um, what I'm talking about it? I watched the whole series, right? Mm -hmm. I watched and I got into it. And whoever mm -hmm. that lead lady was. I was mad oh, at her. Monica, was, Monica Gomez, shout like, out to her. <laughs> hey, Monica, I know you were a character, but Monica, <laughs> you were a stone cold bee. <laughs> Look, I told, I told her when she got, when I cast her and we started rehearsing and stuff. And I was like, you know, people are not going to like you. And she was like, you know, I get it. That's fine. She said, I don't like her either. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but she played it. She played it well. But yeah, yeah. The, the um the book was inspired by his real life, and it has like some excerpts and some poetry. And that's what we tried to bring on screen is that you know poetic feel with some scenes and the music and you know all that stuff wrapped up together. And it just I wrote I read the book on a flight to Philly, and um I just felt like it was a unique male perspective that hasn't been shown yet. Like, you know, the, the, the trials a man feels when, you know, there's unrequited love or, you know, they, they cross that line and get hurt and the journey they take after that, you know, in a healthy yeah. way. Um, yeah. So I really, really wanted to uh, put that on screen. And thankfully, AJ said, OK, so <laughs> and here we are, you know, and uh, so that, yeah, that's it. That's that's what happened. Baby, I was I was feeling some type of I was like, look, I, right. I don't see. And Ooh, speaking I, of extras, while we were talking about you being an extra, I met Monica on the set of a film that uh where I was a script supervisor and she was an extra. And I kept mm -hmm. watching her in that audience. And when I got into the same space with her, I asked her because people come on the sets and sometimes you don't know if they really want to be in films. They just mm -hmm. they just like to hang out on set, some some of them. So um, mm -hmm. so I asked her if she wanted to act, and I said, I'm I'm adapting this web series and I want you to audition. And I sent her the casting call and look, now she's a lead. You know, she she killing it out there and how you know, making her way to Hollywood. So That's she got right. commercials, she, she was on the lifetime movie, you know, all types of stuff happening. So yes. keep going, Jerry. All right. So the next question is, what do you do for fun when you're not working? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep is fun. Naps are life. Okay. I so, know. Naps are life. Um. Yeah. I like it's it's weird now because of COVID. I think I'm a little little. I was already an introvert, but I'm even more antisocial than before. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it was it was like before I would like to go, you know, go out of town, travel, go to live shows, do all this stuff. So now it's like, mm, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, hanging out with my friends and, and, and sleep is fun to me because I feel like I'm going nonstop and sometimes you just need self-care. Self-care is fun. Yeah, I can definitely, definitely agree with that. I've been spending a lot of time because I work here at home. So mm -hmm. when I get out the house, I literally try and spend as much time as I can when I'm outside of the house. Mm -hmm. Try and spend time with my friends. I try and spend time with my family because this pandemic, man, this this shit is for the birds. But we have to continue to do what we have to do and we have to continue to fight and thrive in the middle of something that is set out to destroy the entire world. But on to the next question. So what inspired you to become a filmmaker and a director 
Um, the the short answer is Spike Lee. Um, because right <laughs> um, I've always liked movies. I've always been into movies, but I was like fourteen, and I don't know if if y'all are old enough to remember when St. Vincent had a movie theater, St. Vincent Mall, and Ooh, um, I went to go see uh, I went to go see Malcolm X, and this was back when you were allowed to sit on the floor. Like they packed the theater and I sat on the floor for three hours and I was mesmerized by this film. And I was just like, I want to make people feel how he made me feel leaving that theater. Like I wanted to learn everything there was about Malcolm X. I wanted to see everything there was, you know, that Spike Lee ever created, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, at 14, it was like, I knew <laughs> one day I want to make films. So, um, and it took, it took about 20 some years for me to get there, but I'm here now. So. <laughs> Yes. So, so so Spike Lee would be your your dream director or he would be the person that inspired yeah. you. The person that so, inspired me the most. Other than Malcolm X, what other Spike Lee films have you seen that have really like impressed you the most? Um, there's one that I feel is really underrated because it had an impact on me as a media person, which is bamboozled. Um uh, um, because it let me know my um, duty to how I represent us in film mm -hmm. and media. And so mm -hmm. um, that had a real like impact on me when I saw it. And I just wish more people had seen that because it, it, it made, it kind of made me look at BET a different way and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and black media and stuff like that about how we sometimes um contribute to the misrepresentation of, of us in our community um so that's one of them and then um i'm trying to think i mean there's so many there are um there are. and then you know just like mo better blues like the way he used music which is something that you will see in anything i work on like the way he uses music to drive his films and stuff like that is something i have picked up in um and everything so yeah it's it's there are so many of them but malcolm x okay. is the one that made me want to do film so malcolm x is one of my favorites but i gotta just put this one out there crooklyn crooklyn yes queenie. So, funny. so funny and spike lee made me fall in love with new york that's why i wanted to please part of the reason i wanted to go to new york like he loves his city and he yes. he put he put he showcases it in like every yes. film. So yeah. Um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I'm so um, yeah, Brooklyn is one of those uh family movie. Um, it yeah, there's so many, and then like Inside Man was totally different than anything he's ever made. You know, it wasn't the the same indie type feel, mm -hmm. but it still mm -hmm. was Spike. Um. <laughs> like black Klansman, you know is one of the recent ones it's just yeah it's just <laughs> chirac chirac right. yeah chirac um what was another one uh red hook summer i know a lot of people don't like that one or chirac but mm -hmm. red hook summer touched on something that we really don't talk about in the black community so um yeah, yeah it's just, and i love that spike makes what he wants to make and if exactly. you like it fine and if you don't oh well honest he's honest to his craft he's honest and he does not alleviate from it um um i want to say school days school days yep i saw that like two years ago for the first time and i was like spike lee did this yeah. spike lee did this right i was like and i love musicals so that was like that was one of my favorites too uh we did a black and, hbcu musical Yes. And I learned from Spike Lee the way that he uses his hometown as his backdrop. It's it's what inspired me to when I would do my photo shoots for my covers for my books. I always wanted to use my hometown as the backdrop for for just those 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 pictures because it's literally the raw, it's gritty, it's earth, it's home, it's not fake, it's not forced. It's mm -hmm. honest. And right. he inspired me with that because 
it's literally him just sticking to his roots. He didn't have to go to to L.A. to film something that he knew was going to be real when he filmed it from New York. Mm -hmm. So Spike Lee is definitely one of my favorite, one of my favorite people. And I just love to see him just being a regular person going to the basketball games or when he went to the BET Awards when Beyonce performed Freedom. Him and Samuel L. Jackson was sitting up at the front and they was going crazy because they knew that they were seeing a, 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 a proper representation of what they wanted to see on that stage that night. Mm -hmm. So you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. With <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so how did you just uh, how did you decide when to establish your brand and your company? Um, I was a um, DJ at KLSU when I was at LSU, um, which is where Mahogany came to be, which is like my creative alter ego. And, mm -hmm. um, and I decided then, you know, like I really wanted to build a brand around that name and a media brand, not just because at the time I think I was doing radio and that's what I had planned to do when I left, but I was also interested in, like I said, film and, and other forms of media so I didn't want it to just be like mahogany radio or whatever um so I wrote that that name down but it wasn't it was like maybe five or six years later before it actually happened and um basically coming out of the recession of 2007 um you know jobs were hard to find and yes. so I decided that I was going to freelance you know the uh, in 2007, the film industry was here in Shreveport. I was here. And so I got to work on that stuff. So that re kind of rekindled that 14 year old dream, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then after that, I was like, I can just freelance. And so um, that's when I was like, okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna push Mahogany Media. And um, I did photography, videography, I still do photography and videography. And then I added creative consulting because um, working in radio and working with artists a lot, I realized that a lot of them didn't know the business of entertainment. And mm -hmm. so um, I wanted to help them, you know, learn the business so they wouldn't get messed over like a lot of other artists do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you were basically here when Millennium Studios came to the to Shreveport. Yeah. My, like I, I left, I was leaving Channel 12 and I got a job as a PA a production assistant on um welcome home roscoe jenkins that wasn't the name of it when I yeah. did that but yeah, it was filmed here and so yeah i was on set ironically with spike lee's cousin so <laughs> malcolm d lee who was the director and um and yeah just watching him and i was i was hanging i was actually office pa but i was hanging out on set a lot and um yeah it, it was like yeah this is what i want to do i i want to be on set forever like <laughs> forever yeah so I love mm -hmm. but yeah it was booming like we had major movies come through here for a you few know years. because that's 2007 2007 i was working at el dorado casino at that particular time when they were filming mm -hmm. and monique came through el dorado casino she came down the escalator and we were all at work because i was working in sportsman's paradise in the cafe and when we found out that she was coming down that escalator, we couldn't leave because we were at work. But when we got to the edge or we could see where she was, oh, we went crazy in that place. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, because she, she um, I don't know if she was there. She was in Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins, but I feel like she came back for another movie, too. Um, but, yeah, she played uh, Betty in Welcome Home, yeah. Roscoe Jenkins. And she was she yeah. was nice on, on set, always calling you uh, sister. And, and brother and, you know, like a real, like an auntie vibe, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's your, that's, that's, she is your aunt. She is mm -hmm. your aunt, she's your cousin, she's your sister. Like mm -hmm. she's that around the way girl that, that we, we know her when we see her. Like we can go outside and there's like five people that are just like her. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely an honor for me to meet her when I met her. She probably don't remember me, but I did <laughs> just, Monique! Uh, yeah, you met her. <laughs> um, so the next question is, how have your priorities changed since you started Mahogany Media? Um, 
I think at first I was trying to do too much. Like I, I had so many things that I wanted. Literally, I found my old business card a few weeks ago and it was like, mm-hmm. it looked like a resume. It was so many bullet points on it or whatever. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, it was just like, I, I had all of the, I, I had a lot of skills and I was trying to use them all, but I was burning myself out by trying to be everything to everybody. So, mm-hmm. um, so I had to narrow my focus, you know, and, um, and I think like you learn in, as a creative, like what drives you, like you can do, like I do photography, but not all of us do the same type of photography. Like some of us like to, to do newborns and some people like to do maternity and some people like, to, you know, so it's like, at first I'm doing all of it. And then I find out where I want to, where I, what I love doing. And I love, I love working with other creatives. I love shooting artists and musicians and stuff like that, because I feel like we have more of a collaborative spirit on set. And um, mm-hmm. so, yeah, it's, it was just a lot of narrowing my priorities. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't burn myself out. Yeah, I'm I'm learning that now because it's so much that I want to do. And me being a working artist now, that all of this started from just putting out a book to me doing live readings to me getting to be a, a an extra in hashtag situationships to me becoming a, a an actor in Electra. So now me here with you on a little tea time, I was like, all I was trying to do was just promote a book. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. But I love the fact that I'm finding that there's so much that I can do because I have all of these different skills that I didn't even know that I was using all the time. Mm-hmm. People, were saying, people would tell me all the time, like, Jerry, you are so extra. And then me being so extra led to me just being just the extra face in film. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I've been doing that all this time. I didn't know that that was what that was. So yeah. I found out what my strengths were. I was already using them. And then I started using them for other purposes. And so found my calling just I've been finding my calling doing just so many different things and I'm just starting to focus in okay acting seem like it's something I can I can get into I know I'm gonna have to learn them lines and I'm gonna have to get in there and dive deep and and learn 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 but it's something that I've grown to love because I'm seeing how this can go somewhere I mm-hmm. saw how it went somewhere. I was like, hashtag situationships went somewhere. Mm-hmm. Electra, it's going somewhere. And now on to the new project that we're about to be doing, Ratchet City Blues documentary. And, mm-hmm. and all we're doing now just telling stories. But in it, I'm just, I'm still getting to be me. I'm still getting to just use my gifts. So when you say them, 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 them gifts will make room for you, them gifts will make room for you. I will. Um, the next question is, what challenges did you overcome on your journey? Who child? Oh, um, wanting to quit a lot. Wanting to <laughs> listen. When you become a working, a working creative, working artist, whatever you want to call yourself, full time. But listen, you got. I, I think I wanted to quit at least five or six times um literally wanted to sell all my equipment and be like i'm done with this you know like because i didn't feel the passion for it anymore or you know or everybody's doing what i'm doing so um you know like i i don't want to compete with with people who don't have passion for it it was just like a lot of um not self-doubt but just you know not wanting to be in the arena anymore and uh, overcoming that and one of my mottos for myself is to adapt and overcome. That's a, a, a thing we do all the time on set. Um, so it was just, you know, talking myself down like, girl, this, like you're saying, this is your gift. Um, this is your purpose. I received my purpose as a storyteller a long time ago. I didn't know how I was going to tell stories, but I knew that this is what I was, you know, supposed to be doing with this life. And, mm-hmm. um, and so um, I was, yeah, I was just like, I gotta, this is how you do it. You tell stories through media. You tell stories through you know, uh, telling other people's stories. So, um, 
yeah, a lot of those challenges and, you know, being broke, feeling like you're back in college. Amen. You know, like, you know, getting, getting cut off notices and, you know, <laughs> gotta keep it going. Who's in between gas and food, you know, you, you, you know, you know, so, and, and the challenges of people who don't, um, I won't say they don't respect it, but they don't understand um, the value of art. Um, so it, yeah, it's a it's a lot that we go through. But yeah, um, but I know, like like I said, I know what my purpose is, and I'm I'm gonna keep going anyway. So I just you know I give it give myself a day to be in my feelings, and then we gotta press on. That's it. <laughs> I can definitely say as an artist because. I didn't realize, like, I have a lot of different gifts. Like, singing is one of my gifts. And then when I wrote these books, that became another gift. And then the acting and everything else, all of these things were gifts that that's just kind of came through. But I can definitely say being a working artist, like, if that was not music, if that was not films, if that were not books, if there were not movies, the world would be, like, bland. It would be, like boring like art and 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 what we do as artists it, it gives the world its energy it gives the world a, a perspective where we can tell every story from every perspective and every walk in life and then we have a responsibility even me as a writer I, what I do is different from you I just write out the details but you you piece them together very particularly on a on a on a on on film but we have the responsibility of we have to tell these stories and we have to communicate what the perspective is because that perspective can change the life of someone in the next 20 years mm -hmm. and as artists we have to be able to shape and shift generations to come we have to be able to shape and shift generations to come. So with me being a working artist, I totally understand what you're saying that like they're like, cause I've been doing this for almost two years and doing this for almost two years. It's been like, whoo, what are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do? But then I look at situations like this show that I did yesterday with Adriana and how great that show was. And then to get Q Parker from 112 to comment on my show, it blew my mind. Like, I've been riding around on the high of that all day because that lets me know, okay, you made a decision to, to go in the direction that you wanted to go in, and now it, it's paying off in slow releases and slow gifts and slow gratitude but god is going to continue to open those doors when we continue to stay in those places of gratitude and continue to nurture and pursue and cultivate our gifts so as a working artist or another working artist i understand i understand because it'd be times like i gotta go and find something to do and then i look back it's like no i gotta go and design this flyer for my next show Gotta keep so, listening. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's when he no, that's you, you you're doing it. You're doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next question is what strategies did you use first to market um, mahogany media? Um I think when I first started like um social media was like brand new when I mm -hmm. started mahogany media. So it was a lot of old school marketing, word of mouth, just showing up to places with my camera because people like people with cameras and yeah. <laughs> and meeting, you know, meeting and greeting folks, um, handing my card out, you know, um, getting press passes, volunteering and, you know, do it because as an artist, especially in the beginning, you do a lot of volunteering. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just volunteering, like, do you need extra a extra photographer at this fashion show or do you need you know this is and that trading pictures with models and you know just a lot of that word of mouth stuff um and then social media came and that was another element you know your website your 
uh, your social media pages, your YouTube, you know, all that added to those marketing strategies and making sure that um, people know me and know my face. And when yeah. people started calling me mahogany, I knew it was working. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what, Liz, and I'm I'm learning something from you also um, because I sent. I'm designing my own personal flyer. Like I design everyone, all of my guests is flyers. And then I said, well, let me design my own personal flyer. Let me promote me and let me right. see how I can put me together. So when I designed the first flyer, because I got two that I designed now. When I designed the first one, I sent it to 10 people. You were one of the 10 people. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting the feedback from you and I got the feedback from the other 10 people and I, re -back, and I redesigned it and did it again. And now I'm waiting on more feedback so I can go back and redesign them again. But right. in it, I'm learning that there's a certain eye that we're trying to catch, there's a certain brand that we're trying to represent, there's a certain light that we're trying to be in. And it's going to take more than one try, more than two tries, more than three tries, just to mm -hmm. get it right. So I got to definitely shout you out and all of the other 10 people, the other nine people who, who I sent my flyer out to and y'all been giving me just really great feedback. And when I get that flyer finally done, y'all going to see it because I'm going to send it to y'all first mm -hmm. before I start. Sharing. Okay. But uh, I've learned so much from y'all just, just watching how y'all's work ethics are. And just studying how y'all do it so gracefully. I know that you be screaming on the inside, but you don't look like it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, you got me. <laughs> you're definitely teaching me just not to sweat under pressure. Hold it together even when you want to scream. Mm -hmm. And and when you get home, scream when you get home. Right. Like really scream when you get home. Right. But, Let it all out in private. Yeah, yeah, you got that's how you're supposed to do it. Um, so two more questions. Um, the next question is how do you define success? Um success. Success for me or success in general? In general. In general. Um success in general. I don't know how to define it because I feel like that's that's different for each individual, like their definition of, of success. Um, some people feel like, you know, as long as the bills are paid and their family is happy, they're successful, you know, and then other people feel like, you know, they need to make a certain amount of money and do a certain amount of things and see a certain amount of the world before they can call themselves successful. So I think that's personal, you know, like to each person. Um, for me, I feel like if, um, if I get to the point where I am comfortable and sustaining a living as a creative and my work is being appreciated, then I'm successful. Yes. I love that. Love that. Um, final question. What's the best advice you can give someone thinking about starting a business or pursuing their dreams? For starting a business, do your research, do your research specific to where you live, because state things are different, city things are different, you know, um, do your research, because uh, I was the person who felt like I had to have, I had to have an LLC, I had to do this, I had to do, you know, like what people tell you you should do, but you have to cater um, your business to the needs of your business. So do your research. Do your market research, and that means, uh, you know, study your competition in your market um, so you know what needs you can fulfill that they don't yet, you know? Um, so, yeah, that would be my biggest advice. Do your research. Stay true to your brand, um, you know, once you get it there. Stay true to your brand. Um, and have good customer service, please, please, above all things. <laughs> I know above all that. I don't I don't care if you're a, a poet, you know, or or you're selling t-shirts. Just make sure that you, you know, you represent, you communicate those things and you do good business. Um, as far as following your dreams, um, know that this is one thing I had to learn. It's never too late. 
I got my um I got my MFA at 38. I am 43 right now and embarking on my third career. It's never too late. You know, um as long as you have breath in you, you can go after it, you know? So just just go after it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't and um and yeah, live your purpose. If you know what your purpose is, you're you're a lucky person. So live it. Really good, really good. Um, just wanted to ask you a personal question. I know that your mom passed a little while back. Yeah, back in um, October. How, yeah, how have you been? Because I've been reaching out to you, and I know we've it's all been, been. It's been up and down, honestly, because this is like back to back. I lost my dad in 2020, um, in July of 2020, and lost my mom this past October. So it's been a lot. Thank God for therapy. You know, Black people therapy is okay. Mm -hmm. um so <laughs> it's been a lot of up you know grief grief is already a, a difficult thing to go through so now it the grief has been complicated by losing both of them in such a short time because i was my mom's caregiver uh mm -hmm. and after my dad passed i became her you know full-time caregiver and you know like all, all this was happening like while the series was shooting and you know trying to get the series out and stuff like that yeah. so yeah it's been it's been a lot but you know, day by day. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for asking and checking on me. Yes, because I, I saw your post and I did not know how to contact you. So I would just comment on your post or mm -hmm. I would just leave messages on in your inbox when I could. Mm -hmm. Because as a person who's lost a parent, I understand like that that's a different type of trauma that you would not ever lose it would stay with you forever and mm -hmm. um not to rub, rub salt in your wound but i called my mom this morning and i told my mom I, as i said has, has anyone told you that they love you today and um we just talked for a little while and i just i gave my mom her, i try and give her her flowers as much as i can because i understand like a mom's love is so different from a father's love a mom's love man that shit can change your entire spectrum of life when you know that you that your mom she got your back 100 percent and my heart went out to you my heart went out to you when i found out about your mom and i've been praying for you silently i just been keeping you in my thoughts mm -hmm. silently because as people we have to continue to lift each other up and we have to continue to push each other up when we're down and knowing that if it was me i would want someone to, to keep me in prayer i would want someone and i'm talking about the right people because everybody can't pray for you right but <laughs> in it we just we have to be able to still encourage one another and continue to lift each other up when it's in times like this because times like this are coming to defeat us and are to coming to kill us and to destroy us so I wanted to see you standing strong. I wanted to see you with that smile on your face. I wanted to see you with your bubbly energy and your huge personality. And I was like, that's not the Christy that I know. Cause your post was like a page long post. And I was like, yeah, this is just a wow. Yeah. But in all of it, I am so happy that you are okay. Um, I am a friend if you just need to text and just vent. Um, and I, I definitely am excited about any of your upcoming projects that you're going to be working on. If you wanted to share anything about your upcoming stuff. I am, well, you know, we're shopping situationships to uh, film festivals, as we talked about at the top of the uh, of the interview or whatever. Uh, we're still like waiting on notifications and we'll be doing that for the remainder of this year. Um, so there's that. And then um, I'm trying to raise funds for uh, to go to Film Prize, Louisiana Film Prize, which happens every year here in Shreveport. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. It's like after situation shifts was my life for like two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then I had to decompress from that and deal with grief. So it's like I'm trying to get back, get my mojo back and start creating again. So I'm excited about writing. I'm going to be writing and, you know, getting back on set. Okay, and hey, if you can send me that information about your fundraiser, I'll share it on my Facebook. Okay. And okay. Um, I definitely try my best to try and get you some attention and get some eyes on what you're doing. Because I believe in what you're doing and I'm behind what you're doing. So mm -hmm. from one artist to another, I want to support you where I can. 
Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Now, are you ready for my game? Here you go with this game. I saw your game with Adriana last night. Is it the same game or you got a different it's game? The same game. It's going to okay. be the same game for everyone watching around the world. And this blame who y'all had last night, I don't appreciate. So we're going to get to this game. <laughs> I love it, though, because I never know what people are going to answer, so I just love playing it. So, mm -hmm. the game is candy or corn. I'll ask you about the candy. If you'll eat the candy, you'll say candy. If you don't, you'll say corn. Okay. So, first candy up is gobstoppers. I'll probably eat the corn. I've never been a fan, fan of gobstoppers. <laughs> okay. It's just been, like, you just, you just stuck in forever. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's like a the line later for a hell. Right. Never ending. <laughs> okay, the next candy is 100 grand. The 100 grand. I like those with the Rice Krispies. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so candy. Okay, candy corn. Candy corn. I don't like the slander for the candy corn. Candy <laughs> corn is good. Get into it. I did. I tried. I it just didn't. Like my my teeth, my teeth in the back were like, we're not liking this. Love it. Send it to me. If you ever get candy corn and you don't want it. Hey, I will definitely keep it for you. You didn't say nothing but a word. <laughs> okay, so the next candy is Rolos. Rolos. I I pretty much like anything with caramel in it, I guess. I love, I loved. Okay, I got to send a shout out to Dub Williams right now. Comment and said, don't fake on the candy corn. Correct, Dub. Don't fake on it. <laughs> All right, well, the next candy, the next candy is Heath Bar. What does a Heath Bar have in it? I don't, I'm going to say oh. corn because I don't even know what's in it. It's the English toppy. No. Covered that's corn. Mm -mm. Okay. Mike and Ike's. The Mike and Ike's. That's one of my that's one of my movie candies. So okay. yes. Yeah, it's a quick go to. It's a quick go to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mounds. Corn, because I don't like coconut. I'm enjoy. Corn. I don't know who, who eats that. Like they say who 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 keeps who keeps almond joy and mounds in business. Who eats that? The same people who, who eats Arby's, I guess. I ain't gonna say don't fake on Arby's. <laughs> yes, let's sip to that one. Mm. Okay, so the next candy is Chunky. I don't think I've ever had a Chunky. Me neither, but it just sounds so what? fascinating. About... It's just chocolate? It's a chocolate covered raisin. Oh no. Corn. <laughs> it's, a big old, it's a big old raisin it. Is that what it is? I don't No no no. That's nasty. <laughs> okay, and the final candy is sweet fish. I don't think I've ever had those either. But it's it's like like a Twizzler. Is that what they taste like? E, those are the Twizzlers from hell. Oh no! Okay, never mind. The corn. <laughs> they are so awful. Twizzlers, but those, Twizzlers are already a struggle, so I don't want nothing worse than a Twizzler. No. Right, right. Uh, so right. thank you so much for playing candy or corn. Um, thank you so much for coming through tonight. I really appreciate you taking out your time and your energy and your love and support for a little mm -hmm. tea time. Um, did you want to share your handles where people can follow you? Um, you can follow me on all platforms. I think I'm I'm on TikTok now. I need to make some TikToks. But uh, at Mahogany Media, it's Mahogany with the I, Media. Um, and if you have if you want to see uh Jarek and Situationships, go to our YouTube channel, Situationships the series, and binge all eight episodes. You know, it only take you a couple of hours, and you can see yeah. them shine. Yeah, his, I was his, in, beautiful, his beautifully lit face. 
I was in the episode again for the people of one. In the last one, but they need to watch all of it. <laughs> yeah, so that one have to yeah, because I'm not not telling. Mm. But I enjoyed you so much tonight. Um if you have any anything coming up, I would love to be a part of the work again. Mm-hmm. Um and I would definitely love to invite you back to a little tea time where we can do this again. Um okay. the game will be, probably be different by then. Okay. But definitely enjoyed you tonight. Um and thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. Bye y'all. Have a good one, darling. All right, you guys. Um, great show tonight. Great show tonight. Thank you to my guest, Miss Christy Witter, for coming through. Um, definitely got to send a shout out again to Bigelow T, Bigelow Perfect Peach for the tea that's in my cup tonight. Got to send another shout out to Bigelow Perfect Peach and to Gino Stima. It's a real good blend of tea, y'all. Like, it's a really good brew tea so i love it because i literally drank this tea like every single day not just during the show but all the time so definitely just got to send a shout out again to bigelow perfect peach y'all bigelow perfect peach y'all keep that perfect peach coming i need that in my life all right would love to encourage you guys to check out my books at amazon.com the confessions of a conceit Coming Full Circle, the revised edition. I always mess that up. Coming Full Circle, the revised edition. Coming Full Circle to Marriage, Money, and Mayhem. The Confessions of a Conceited Drama King, my favorite book of poetry. And my second book of poetry, Catching Up With Me, all available at Amazon.com. Type in the search bar on Amazon. Jarius, J-R-A-Y-I-S, Dion, D-E-Y-O-N-D. And check out my books. And I definitely would love to just thank all of my royal readers. For everyone who has been supporting my book brand. For everyone who supports what I do here with a little tea time. And... Um, Got to, again, send a shout-out to SaucySonyaSpices.com. You guys shop Saucy Sonya Spices and use my coupon code GOODEATSJERRY and receive 5% off your purchase when you shop at Saucy Sonya Spices. Um, Again, I will be promoting that every single week with Saucy Sonya Spices with the flyer, so y'all definitely stay tuned um, for the flyer next week on Monday. And if y'all have any questions before Monday, y'all can always hit me up in my inbox. Um, send a, a, a comment on down here in the shows, in the comment section, and I will try and get to your, your comments and your questions as soon as I possibly can. Um, definitely would love for you guys to go and check me out on TikTok at the Jarius Dion and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Jarek, a King Among Men Thomas. If y'all have not seen these shows of A Little Tea Time here on Facebook, you can definitely go over to YouTube and check out the other episodes on YouTube. And I definitely would love for you guys to remember the quote of the week. Remember, you are still dope without validation celebration and congratulations and as i say after every single show remember to be great on purpose and not by accident the future is now um, i am jared aka jarius d your favorite published author and before i go i need to shout out all of my viewers um it's Kia Renee on on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Dub Williams, thank you for tuning in. Miss Kia Renee, I see you here on my Facebook. Thank you for checking in tonight. Uh, who else? Miss Crystal Bobo, thank you for checking in tonight. Again, shout out to Miss Shakisha Scott and Miss Nene O'Neill for, for watching the show tonight. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And as always, I love you guys. Until tomorrow with Miss Alessa Kirkhart. Y'all enjoy this wonderful evening. The weather's really good tonight. So I'm going to probably sleep with the window up and, and not with my heat on. 
And um, y'all have a great night. Jerry's D out. Y'all ready? Oh yeah. Who listen? Hey, Mom. I love you. Good night.